Now we're ready to take a look at the fare changes that airlines make every day. So we looked at the initial market pricing, uh, sort of the strategy of how airlines enter uh, new markets with a pricing structure. Now we're going to take a look at the, um, the fare changes. So uh, the two changes that can occur, of course, are increases and decreases, and we're going to take a look at them uh, separately. And the first one we're going to do is the fare increases. So let's take a look at the demand curve that we uh, were using in one of our earlier videos. So let me draw that again. We had some, some sort of demand curve that looked like something like this. Uh, let's see if I can straighten that out a little bit. So uh, it doesn't have to be that perfect. A downward sloping demand curve. And if you recall, we said that along this straight line demand curve, there were different elasticities. Around the midpoint, we had elasticity equal to 1. So elasticity was equal to 1. And we said that was unit elasticity. And, um, and remember, we said when uh, demand is at unit elasticity, revenue was maximized. So let's, let's draw that back in, too. We had uh, the revenue was represented by the area of this rectangle. And if you can find the price that max maximizes the area of that rectangle, you would have the uh, optimal price. So that would be uh, P, like P star for optimal and Q star for optimal. Um, okay, so when elasticity equals 1, you're at the maximal revenue, which is the optimal price and quantity for, for one given fare. Um, and we said that above that point, above that midpoint on a straight line demand curve, that portion of demand is considered elastic. So elastic is where elasticity is greater than 1, elastic. And below the midpoint, we had the portion of the demand curve which was inelastic, and that's where the elasticity is uh, less than 1. Okay, And this is the portion of the demand curve that we're going to operate in when we're uh, looking at fare increases. Because, as we said, when demand is inelastic, raising the price will result in an increase in total revenue. So if you remember our definition of elasticity, it was the percentage change in quantity as a result of the ch percentage change in price. So when demand is inelastic, a increase, a percentage increase in price will result in a smaller percentage decrease in quantity, and that will increase so let's try to illustrate that by putting in, let's say we're at our initial price was P, I want to use a different color here, uh, green. Let me say our, our initial price was P naught, and um, let's get my line here. So we were at this price, and at that price we have a quantity of Q naught, okay, so P naught and Q naught, and we're in the inelastic portion of the curve. So knowing we're at in the inelastic portion of the curve, we can increase that price from P naught to Q, excuse me, P naught to P one, and then let's see if I can get my line back here, and that's okay, close enough, right? Let's see if we can move that over just a little bit. And uh, P1 will result in a new quantity demanded of Q1. And this area, this area here is greater than this, this area down here. So since we were in the inelastic portion of the demand curve, increasing the fare, from, in this case, from P0 to P1 actually increased uh, overall uh, revenue. So if the pricing analyst knows that she's operating in this portion of the demand curve, she knows that uh, demand is inelastic or has a you know, pretty good feeling that de demand is inel inelastic at her uh, 
current price, it stands to reason she's going to want to increase it from uh, the current price to something higher to that. Now, you know, I said in practice, I mean, you know, it, it's really hard to know what the demand curve looks like. It's certainly not linear, and and you really don't know where this midpoint is. So the analyst is trying to approach that midpoint. She's not even really sure that demand is inelastic. She's she's going from um, some data analysis, some uh, some history of how the flights are booking up in this market, and some of it is just intuition. Um, but she's going to attempt to get closer to that midpoint from moving from where she is to some higher price. So let's put some numbers in here and, and create an example. Uh, let's say let's say P naught was one hundred dollars. I think that'll be easy to work with. And uh, P one. See if I can get the right color here. P one. Sorry. P1 is, we're going to say it's just a 10% increase to $100. And, uh, oh, I don't know if this was off the screen. Let me scroll a little bit for you here. Uh, yeah. And let's put some quantities in here. Let's say the uh, initial quantity was, oh, I'm sorry, now I see what, um, let's make that P1 at $110. The initial quantity was, um, well, let's say 50 at Q naught. So at $100, 50 seats were demanded. And at P1, uh, let's see if we can get back there. Let's say the quantity demanded fell to 48. So a 10% increase in price resulted in less than a 10% decrease in quantity. I think that's, what's that, a 4% decrease. So we know from our um, study of elasticity that in this case revenue will actually go up. Uh, but because I want to continue with this example through a couple of uh, uh, different scenarios, I think I'll actually put the numbers. Um, yeah, let's calculate this out so we have a good example to continue to work with. Okay, so let's say Let's write it over here. Let's say P, I'm going to choose a different color here. Go with uh, red, I think. So at um, price, when the price was $100, the quantity was 50 seats, and revenue totaled $5,000. And when the price increased to one hundred and ten dollars the quantity decreased to forty eight seats let's get our calculator out here and what is that one ten times forty eight equals five thousand two hundred eighty dollars so revenue increases to five thousand two hundred and eighty dollars so when this airline is acting on its own uh, looking at its demand curve and increasing fares by 10%, they will increase revenue by uh, $280, whatever that percentage increase is.